it seems like we just can't move out of that place. And so when you go, if, if you've been continually being bombarded time after time after time, every time you come face to face with that obstacle again, you're expecting to be bombarded. You're expecting defeat. Well, God want to change that around. Let's start expecting victory. Well, Pastor, how do I do that? Just start opening your mouth and say, Father, I thank you that I'm your child. And because I'm your child, you love me and you desire the best for me. This, this is my job. I, I, I'm, I'm putting in the application and I'm putting it in in faith and I believe, Lord God, that you will not disappoint me. See, you do all you know to do and allow the Spirit of God to just do the rest. He'll give you the peace that passes understanding. He'll anoint you like you've never been anointed before. He'll give you everything you need to fulfill your purpose. Everybody say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for the anointing, and I thank you for your presence. Lord Jesus, this is your service. We are your people. We depend on the anointing. Lord God, we don't want to do anything in the flesh, anything, Lord God, that's not in your will. Lord God, we've come out tonight, Lord God, and we expect a supernatural impartation. We expect changed lives. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, you heard our prayers and intercession concerning this service. And Father, I thank you right now. We bound every hindrance, every distraction, and every obstacle. Father God, I thank you right now. You're going to meet every need tonight. I thank you, Lord God, every yoke is going to be destroyed in our lives. Every burden is going to be removed. Father God, we are so careful to give you all the praise and all the glory. In the matchless name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. See it at double time. I don't know. I just keep sensing. I don't know. Uh, we're going to talk about the signs of the time, but I just keep sensing that someone has something else they want to share. Come on. And, and if you have something you want to share about the outreach or something that happened this week, it's all for the edification. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, I, I have something to say, but I feel like I was kind of convicted sitting down. Walk in, and I, it's like I, I felt like I needed to say it. But, you know, sometimes you have something to say, you don't really want to talk out of term and stuff. But it's like I wasn't sleeping. Um, a couple of days ago but it's like I got a warning and it was more to say that we need to stop playing church you know like stop saying it stop reading it from the Bible and not applying it and it was almost like I'm told to say this out loud and I'm sitting there and I'm like I don't want people to think I'm crazy with saying this but it's a warning and it's it's for me it's for everyone it's like sometimes like there is this barrier amongst us in Christianity and moving higher in God and this barrier is our own selves it's like we say stuff and we want to be a light onto other people, but do we really interpret it and apply it to our own personal lives? And whether we want to admit it or not, it's playing church. So you have to stop playing church. God business is serious. It's not, it's fun and it can be fun, but it's serious. You can't play with God. You know, it's not about emotions. You just can't play. And I have to be obedient to what he says. I don't want to come off as rude or anything like I'm trying to single out anyone. That's not, because this is also for me. But if I get it, I want others to get it too. Because years of Christianity, it don't matter. It's what you're really doing. Are you walking the walk and talking the talk? I hope.
hope you heard that because I, I was just meditating today and that came to me today. You know, we, we, I don't care how you think about it. You know, you try to fool people. You try to, and, and you can only do that for a certain period of time. That's only going to last for a little while. But God sees you even when you try to fool people. So what we need to do is say, Lord, I'm, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit trying to please people and I want to please you. And let it be more than just words. Let it come out of your spirit and let the spirit of God bring this to your remembrance. See, we're in a season of the supernatural. You have something you want to share? Come on. We're in a season of the supernatural. And during this season, we're expecting God to move. Hear that, Sister Sandra? I want you to be expecting God to move. I don't care how many times, come on, sister. I don't care how many times uh, it, it seems like the enemy has won. No. This time, we're going to start expecting something. And I got that, Sandra, while I was just standing here. We're going to expect. Now, what you need to do is just begin to put your hands to the plow. You started with the nursery and all that stuff. Continue to do what you need to do. Continue to do what you know to do. And watch God begin to open up doors. Amen. Good afternoon. Obedience to God. Pastor and Sister Drumgo. Woman of God, I don't know you. I don't know anybody here but Sister Chloe's. Um, but I just want to encourage you because you confirm what the Lord shared with me today as well. And I was going to sit there and I say, God, I don't want to say anything. I don't know these people. But you're not throwing any darts at anybody. Because people go around, and I've been in church all my life, and I'm a 50-year-old grown woman. But I bless God. I haven't been in Christ all my life. I've been in Christ over half of my adult life. But the Lord spoke that same thing to me because I've been in warfare all week. People are going around and they're quoting the scriptures, but they're not living the word of God. We saying, if my people which are called by my name would just humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn, we not turning. We seeking him, we praying, and we are humble, but we're not turning away. Because too many of us, and we got another generation coming up behind us, that we are accountable for. You can believe it or not. You're not just in this Christian walk for yourself. Not just for your individual family. You're four and no more. Pastor, I ain't come to say all this, but I got to be led by the Holy Ghost as well. Because God has really been dealing with my heart. I've been seeking the Lord concerning direction for my life. I'm not trying to go into details of what I'm dealing with, but I'm the sole caregiver for my mom during the day. And I work nights. And, I, and it's hard to come in church. And then when you come to the churches, the people that sing and praise and worship are shacking or you're going out partying and you think you could party on a Friday and a Saturday and think you can give God a true praise on a Sunday. That's not real. You got to give your heart wholeheartedly to the Lord. Anything that you do, you got to work as unto God, not unto man. And I just want to encourage your body today and encourage you, man of God. Because you confirmed what she said. And I thank God. He said a threefold card is not easily broken. So I give God glory for the confirmation of his word. And thank you for the opportunity. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, and it goes right back to what we said earlier. You, can't fool, you, can, you can try to fool people sometimes. You, you come into church and you lift your hands and bless the Lord. But when you get outside on your job or get home, you're cursing. You're doing the end and everything. And then you want to, it's like you, now, here's the problem with that. If you don't repent, if it doesn't grieve you, something's wrong. That ought to grieve you to the core. I, I may not tell you, I, I may not be saying you shouldn't be cursing, you shouldn't be stealing, you, you shouldn't be doing those things because, you know, well, you know you shouldn't be. But when you do it, it ought to grieve you to the core because of the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. Now, this is what James said. I was looking for that while that sister was talking. He says, but the tongue can no man tame. It's an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men. You bless God and curse men, which are made after the similitude of God. So whatever you do to man, you've done it to God. So if you curse man, you're cursing God. Oh, Jesus. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brother and my sister, these things ought not be. Ought not so to be. Everybody say it ought not so to be. 
Now you see, and God is looking at me. I want to please him. He's looking at me. And he wants me to be the example. And, and if I'm not a good example, I'm hindered someone else. And when I hinder people, oh, that grieves my father. Even, you know, your natural mother and father, it grieves them when they see you making decisions, ungodly decisions. When they see you making decisions that's going to take you down the tubes. When they see you making decisions that's going to bring reproach on your name. Well, it does the same thing to my father. It grieves him when we do things that we know he's not pleased with. Oh, Jesus. Lord, help us. Lord God, we're imperfect beings, but we serve a perfect God. Lord Jesus, we don't, we don't want to hinder what you want to do in our lives. We, we want, Lord God, we want you to perfect those things that concerns us. And whatever is in our life that you are not pleased with, we want it gone. Because we want to live a sanctified life, a consecrated life. We want to live the life which you can be well pleased in. We want you to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. I thank you for the anointing. I thank you for the glory. Lord God, I thank you that as I decide this evening, Lord God, that I'm going to stand on your word. I'm going to get those things out of my life. I'm going to shake them off with the help of the Holy Ghost. And I thank you right now, Lord God, I will live a sanctified, holy life. I'll hear your voice, and I'll obey it. Now, Father, right now, if I, all of us, if we've done anything, Lord God, to, to, to hurt you or, or to bring a reproach on your name, we repent right now in the name of Jesus. You do that right now. Nobody's looking, nobody's thinking about you. It's just you and God. The Holy Ghost has prompted us. The Holy Ghost is moving right now. Lord, I repent. And I thank you. As, as a body here, Lord God, we repent. If there's anything we've done that you are not pleased with to bring a reproach on your name, if you try to get us to go a direction and we rebel, we repent right now. And Father, I thank you right now. Before we can get those words out of our mouth, you've already answered. You've already repented. You've already heard us and already forgiven us. Thank you for that, Lord. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Okay, that's good. I got the release now. Anybody else got anything? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Turn to Second Timothy. Give me a few minutes. Give me about, what, 20 minutes? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're in a season of the supernatural. Can you say that? Say, I'm in a season of the supernatural. Now, I guess I... I really, I really want you to say it and believe it. But what you need to do is keep saying it long enough and I guarantee it'll drop down in your spirit and you'll know. Because you'll start walking in it. You'll start seeing that testimony. You'll start hearing about the power of God. You'll start hearing about and seeing the anointing of God in your life. See, you are anointed. There's people, there are people that's waiting for you to come by their path waiting for you to cross that path because of the anointing that's on your life. <clears throat> and uh, as you begin to prepare yourself, we, we've been in the conference and we've been talking about stirring up the gift. As you begin to stir up the gift, the Spirit of God will stir you up. And he began to allow the gift to begin to flow through you. You're in a season of the supernatural. And God is expecting supernatural things to flow through you. As you begin to say, I'm in a season of the supernatural, say, Lord, help that be a reality to me. Just like you encourage yourself in the word, you are the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. Just like you encourage yourself in the word, you say, all oh, my needs are met according to his riches and glory. Just like you encourage yourself in the word, you say, whatever I put my hands to will prosper. There are things in the word you begin to encourage yourself with. Encourage yourself with, I'm in a season of the supernatural. So I'm walking in the realm of the supernatural. Second Timothy chapter 3. Did I tell you the train now? <coughs> 2 Timothy chapter 3. We're going to look here a few minutes at the signs of the time. Uh, and as we begin to, to take, uh, take notice of what's going on around us, we all know that it's time to quit playing. It's time to begin to live holy. Because we never know, you never know who's watching you. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 1. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 1. This know also that in the last days 
perilous or dangerous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitor, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. How many of us are r rather go on vacation? Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Then the next phrase it says, "From search turn away." If we now this this wasn't written to sinners, you know. He's not talking about sinners here, by the way. The Bible was not written to sinners. The Bible was written to the church. And in this particular passage of scripture, he was uh, he was talking to Timothy. Paul was talking to Timothy. And if you begin to read and look at this thing, you can see that we've been, we're being pulled away. We've been drawn away from the things of God, drawn away from our first love, drawn away from the thing that caused us to prosper. And we'll see it. And these people, you know, uh, you know these boasters, heady, high-minded people, disobedient, incontinent, these people that's lovers of themselves more than lovers of God, you know, we expect that of the world. But he's talking about people in their body. And you see what? And until we get back to God, until we quit faking, until we uh, become serious about this thing, all kinds of doors will be open. And who's the world going to look to? They're looking for us, for answers. We have the answers. The world knows we have the answers. Now, like I said before, we don't know it, apparently. But the greater one lives on the inside of us. We've got the answer to everything. And we just spend time in prayer. When we come out of prayer, God will reward us. And he'll reward us with the answer. Turn to, uh, let's look at chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Now, I'm saying this, but uh, it, it, it doesn't do any good to look at the signs of the times if you don't change them. Because otherwise you're just reading a history book. But if you decide that you're going to take the greater one that's on the inside of you and change what we see in this world, and you've got the power to do it. Now, it's going to take work. That we're going to have to, you know, sometimes push back the plate. You know, it's not that we, I'm not condemning people. It's that when we get close to God, he'll direct our every step. Sometimes, you know, would you fast if the church didn't call the fast? Would you pray, and, and, and you know God wants to do something in your life. Would you say, Lord, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push the plate aside, and I'm going to fast, and I'm going to pray. And you're the only one. The church is not fasting and praying. You are. You're going to God. I'm going to tell you, when you start doing that, when we start doing that individually, now when the church calls a fast, you won't, you know, be all right. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. It says what? Preach the word. Be instant. And reprove, rebuke exhort with all long suffering and doctrine for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears they shall turn away from they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned to fables or stories but Watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of what your ministry. Paul is encouraging Timothy, and I'm going to encourage you. Be careful that when you hear something and you don't like it, examine it by the word. Don't turn it off because you hadn't heard it that way before. Don't turn it off because it's hitting you. Don't turn it off. Not if you want to be perfected in the things of God. Listen to that word and say, Lord, if that's for me, 
bring it down in me. Let it burn down in me and pull out, bring out this stuff in me. And he'll do it. It's the worry that's going to perfect you. That's the only thing that's going to do it. Everybody say, thank you for the worry. Proverbs 28. Let's look at that real quickly. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We've got to be careful, and especially during now, during the times we'll see, seeing what we're experiencing, not only in our city, but in the nation. If you're not careful, you could be swayed by public opinion. You could be swayed by your own uh, um, desires, about your own thoughts, about your own upbringing. There are many things that can sway you, but the only thing that should be persuading us now is the word of God. What did God say about it? How, do, how would Jesus react? What would Jesus do? And let that be more than just words out of our mouth. Let's say, Lord, help me to be uh, this example. Help me to be the rock. Jesus, I want to be like you. And, and you may not be able to do that unless you begin to fast, unless you begin to pray, unless you say, Lord, help me. Be this, be this example in this world. Do the, uh, Proverbs 28, 15 says, As a roaring lion and a raging bear, so is a wicked ruler over the poor people. See, so when you have a rick, wicked ruler over people, it's like a roaring lion, I said raging, right? And a raging bear. In other words, uh, let me let's listen to this in the, um, I think I wrote this down in the uh, New Testament. Oh, yeah, here, here it is. A wicked ruler is as dangerous to the poor as a roaring lion or an attacking bear. A wicked ruler. A ruler with no understanding will oppress his people. But one who hates corruption will have long life. Now, who determines a ruler? Who determines how a ruler should act. In other words, the Bible says the heart of a king or the heart of a ruler is in his hand and he'll turn it whichever way he desires. Is that the word of God or not? Well, if, if we've got a wicked ruler or somebody that's an authority that's wicked, the believer ought to be able to change that. But let me tell you what we're doing. We're acting just like everybody else in the world. We're getting these meetings, and when they start talking about wickedness and when they start talking about wrong, we're, we're agreeing with them and we don't have an answer. We don't tell them an answer. We don't tell them, yeah, but the Bible says if we pray, if we lift them up in prayer, because now it's going to make you look like a fool. And we don't want to look like a fool. But there's coming a time when you either stand for God or you're going to fall for anything. I don't want to fall. No more. I, I follow too much enough on my own things I don't know about. For sure I don't want to fall with things I know about. And when I know what I'm supposed to do, I've got to change the signs of the time to back to God. And I've, God's given me the ability to do that, given us the ability to do that. This wicked ruler will no longer, and he doesn't have the right to reign over my life. When he reigns over my city, he's reigning over my life. You wouldn't let him come in your home, would you? You'll stop him out of your home. You, you, you know, you wouldn't let him invade your, your relatives' homes if he had the authority. No. Well, he has no right to invade our city. Put him out. If Gideon could stop 130,000 men with 300, and you know he couldn't do that by himself, could he? There's no way he could do that in the natural. He had to depend on God. Well, you don't have to do this in the natural. You're walking in the power of the Holy Ghost. God has destined us, he's called us for this time, this season, to change destiny. It's kind of like he's put it in my hand, our hands. He said, okay, what you going to do about it? And you can, uh, you, you know, I think what a lot of times we do, we'll play it lightly. We'll say, well, the church down the street ain't doing nothing. They're bigger than we are. It doesn't matter. You're 300. You get here, 300. Say, Lord, if this is what you've called me to do, I'll do it with all my might. I'll do it depending on you. You know, the, the outreach on Sunday, the first time we've we done anything like that. Everybody say, but. But we touch lives. As a matter of fact, I was talking to one young man doing this outreach, and he said, I never felt this before in my life. And he, you know, he, he had been to church before, but he hadn't, had, he hadn't experienced the power of God. And every one of us 
every one of us from the youngest to the oldest has the power to release that anointing. But we got to be willing to do it. Every one of us. I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care how short you've been saved. You've got the power to release the anointing. Proverbs 29. I'm going to just read it. You don't have to turn down. 29, 12, uh, 2 says, When the righteous are in authority, the people what? rejoice. But when the wicked bears rule, the people mourn. Proverbs 29, 2 says, When the righteous are in the control, when the right, righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Well, don't you want to be rejoicing? No. Verse 12 says, If a ruler hawking to lies, all of his servants are wicked. So, if 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 we, we, if I've got the, the power now let me tell you this sometimes it's going to take a little bit more than prayer when you come out your prayer closet the spirit of God may tell you to get on the phone or write a letter you have to be obedient again I see this, this is a stirring up again you got to get out of yourself and you got to begin with, if he tell you to write the letter he'll tell you what to put on it just start you got to, you, you, you got to begin to uh, make that first step Dear Mr. Governor, put his name, or whoever, whoever God told you to write it to. And as you begin to pen that letter, because you come out of your prayer closet, you see. And as you begin to pen and write that letter, don't you know when he read it, if there's going to be an anointing on it? And it's going to change some decision he had to make that day, just because you were obedient? The heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord, and he'll turn it whichever way he desires. Well, he's turning it toward him. Because we are praying and you are praying. You're coming out of the prayer closet anointed. You're coming out doing what God has told you to do. And you'll begin to see the power of God like never before. Oh, let's read one more scripture. Write down Matthew 7, 21 to 27. And go home and you read that. Ah, let's read it. Matthew 7, 21 says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doth, he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So he said, the doer of the word is the one that pleased me. Just because you talk out your mouth and you're not doing it, just because, you know, you, you're, not, you're not serious about this thing. And the reason you're talking out of your mouth because you want to please the person sitting next to you. Oh, I, I, I don't, I'm not too uh, engaged about pleasing, pleasing you. I want to please God. Not everybody that say to me, Lord, Lord, going to enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? Then will I profess unto you, I never, everybody say never, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. God, what do you mean you never know these? Now listen, he did not say you didn't cast out no devils. He did not say you didn't do these things. In my, he said, I never knew you. Now, this is something as humans we can't understand. Why is it you think he said, I never knew you? When Jesus, when you ask God to forgive you of your sin, did you know he forgets about it? He never know it happened again? Oh Jesus, you missed it. You just made a mistake. You said, Lord, will you please forgive me? God has the ability when he says I forgive you, he forget it and out of his memory. So the next time you come to him and ask him, say Lord, will you forgive me for that? He said, for what? The first time you asked me, you had, for, you know, you, he had forgiven you for it. So when you ask him again, he, he wonder, he's wondering what you're talking about. Here, when he says I never knew you, and I don't have time to go into it right now, tonight, but there's, there's scripture that says, you know, if you're a good man, and you're serving the Lord, and you're doing all you know, you're doing all these good works, but in your latter end, you change, and you begin to be, serve wickedness. It said you're going to live your life. You're going to be punished because of the wickedness you served. It also says now, if you're a wicked person, and you change at your latter end, and you begin to serve God, you're going to be blessed because of what? You're serving of the Lord. The wickedness will be forgotten. People of God, we cannot live on our laurels. We can't live because we've been saved for 25 years and the last, uh, this year we decide we're going to begin to go astray. It's not going to work. God is looking for someone to stand, stand, and stand. And I'm going to be the one. And so are you. Verse 
Verse 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, hear and what? Hear and what? You got to hear and do. I will liken them unto a wise man which built his house on a rock. And the rains descended and the floods came. The wind blew. In other words, adversity began to come. And it beat upon the house. And it fell not. For it was what? Founded upon a rock. Everyone that heareth these saying of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto the foolish man that built his house on the sand. The rains descended, the floods came, the winds blew, beat upon the house, and it fell. Great was the fall of it. Have you ever wondered why it seemed like the same things could happen to two individuals? One person buckled under the pressure, and the other seemed to come out uh, not even the smell of smoke on them. It's because of the foundation. And the foundation must be in Christ. If the foundation is in Christ, then everything you stand on is going to be in Christ. You've got the purpose. You've got to decide right now that, Lord, I'm going to serve you with all my heart. I thank you for this opportunity. This is you talking to God. I thank you for the opportunity. You saved me and you set me free. Sometimes it's a challenge, you know, because, but you have the power in you to cast all that aside. Everybody stand on your feet. We're about to go. You have the power in you. Greater is he that's in you, he that's in us, than he that's in the world. As I begin to seek the face of God, and I'm looking at the signs of the times, I'm not blind. I can see what's going on around me. But when Jesus was on the scene, and he is on the scene now in me, when he shows up, he changes what goes on around him. You remember the disciples in the boat, there was a storm around them, and they thought the boat was about to sink. They wake up Jesus, say, Master, don't you care what happened? Well, what did he do? He took authority over the situation. The boat was about to sink, but they had to awake Jesus. There are things that's going on in your life. You need, you need to awaken the Jesus that's on the inside of us. The thing going on in this city, in this nation, we need to awaken the power of the Holy Ghost. Don't let it sleep on a pillow when it's in you. Don't let it lie dormant when it's in you. Stir it up. Wake him up and say, I need your help. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day you're going to uh, uh, penetrate that spirit realm with your words. Today is the day you're going to reveal that your words are spirit and life and they will not return forward. Father, I thank you right now for the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord God, we've come tonight to receive from you. Father, I thank you right now, Lord God, that this was your service. And Father God, even though we may not sense anything in our natural, Lord God, I believe the power of the Holy Spirit has been released. I've been energized. I've been revived. I've been charged up. And I thank you right now, Lord God, we're going to leave this place with purpose. We're going to leave this place, Lord God, with vision. We're going to leave this place desiring, Lord God, to be the examples or instruments in your hand. We are workers together with you. We're going to change our surroundings. Lord God, people are waking us up. And so we are prophesying to the surroundings. When be still. Adversity cease. Attack stop. You open your mouth and I guarantee you that it'll be back with the power of heaven. The Holy Ghost are back with your saying. Now you don't have to be perfect. You just have to be presentable. Present yourself to the Lord. Allow him to use you. Quit condemning people because who you condemn, you con who you, you're convicting your own self. You are no better off. I guarantee you there's some aspect in your life that you are lacking. And it's probably worse than the person you're condemning. Let's ask, say, Lord, help me to see people through your eyes. Not only that, help me to see myself through your eyes. I, I want to be this example. Because only then will I be able to change destiny. Only then, only then 
will I be able to allow the power of God to be released so I can change the signs of the time, change situations. And Father, I'm ever so careful to give you all the praise and glory. I will never get the big head because I know this is not me. It's all you. Thank you, Lord God, for this night ordained of you. And Father, I give you all the praise. to God. I know you do this on your own time, but let's just, as a, as a collective body, let's just say, Lord, I, I just desire more of you. I, I desire for you to use me, especially during this season, especially during what's going on right now, and I don't want the glory. I, I, I don't want my name called not one time. Whatever you want me to do, just tell me. Wherever you want me to go, just tell me. I yield to you in the Holy Spirit. We need wisdom. We need wisdom from on high. You said if we need wisdom or if we like wisdom to ask you for it. We're asking you for it right now. We're asking you for direction right now, Holy Spirit. You said you'll reveal the things to, of God to us. And I thank you. We're asking you right now for revelation. We're asking you right now to reveal the things of God to us. Lord Jesus, let that be more than just words. Lord God, let your power and your anointing be manifested tonight. Let the glory of God be manifested in this place and in my life. Father, I'm ever so careful to give you all the praise. Now, I thank you for this opportunity to just come and bask in your presence.